I think if there's one question I get asked more than anything else, it has to be, Tom, tell me more about pixel substructures. Okay, no one's ever actually asked me that, but I thought a pixel was a pixel, um, but I couldn't have been more wrong. So the lovely people over at Samsung Display sent over the Fold 3 and also the Flip 3, and also this little guy, this loop microscope. And they told me to check out the diamond pixels in these latest foldable OLED screens which they say displays complex detail more efficiently and accurately with sharper edge definition and more legible text than other screens, even at the same resolution. They also told me to check out their brightness and battery life boosting Eco Square OLED tech, and also to test their claims that these two can fold up to 200,000 times. I really need to automate this test. The thing is, folding phones and tablets aren't for everyone, and the uh, Z Fold 3 especially is quite pricey, but there's just nothing else quite like these, and in my opinion at least, as good as these in this form factor. And I really appreciate Samsung actually pushing beyond the usual copy and paste smartphone formula. And together with the hinge, it's the display that really sets these apart. Both of these phones get these special diamond pixels, the diamond bit being the shape of each RGB subpixel, as opposed to the more squared off layouts you find on other brand screens. And so the whole idea is that a diamond layout is much more efficient at drawing complex patterns like text or diagonal lines thanks to having few, meaning you should get less blur and more sharply defined edges to your photos and videos and well, everything you've got on screen. And it should be noticeable to the naked eye. In fact, this patented layout is important enough that it comes with its own logo, which to me is maybe less of a diamond and more of an angry green-eyed falcon. So let's bring in this guy. It's the loop microscope, which can magnify up to 128 times. Pointing it the wrong way. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I think there's like a million things I'd like to try this with, but uh, for now, pixels are also fun. So do you wanna come around, Pete, and see if you can stick that camera lens in there? How's it looking? This thing is a little bit tricky to use and especially put a camera lens down it, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of the pixel substructure of the Fold 3. And if we do focus in on this white screen at max brightness, all those tiny RGB nodes become clear. Now side by side with another brand's phone screen, you can see that diamond shape is pretty unique, although straight away it's not obvious why it's better. However, if we move over to the edge of an on-screen button, for example, we can see that the edge of the diamond pixels is much more closely defined as it transitions between the colors. So you really can see that there's less blur, especially around fine, hard edges. And to me, it looks like text benefits the most. Again, the edges are much more clearly defined. So getting back to the science for a moment, the number of luminous subpixels needed to draw an object or light an area seems to be narrower and more tightly controlled on this screen. Now, of course, there is a crease going down the middle of the fold and also the flip, uh, but it's not that noticeable most of the time, although I was worried that uh, it would skew the pixel structure slightly or we get some sort of smearing or blurring, but actually even going between, well, the regular part of the screen and the folding part, there isn't any difference, even under a microscope, which is actually pretty impressive. The shape, the alignment, and brightness all seem consistent throughout. So obviously me trying to demonstrate this over a YouTube video and looking down a microscope isn't necessarily the best way of showing off this technology, but essentially this diamond pixel substructure is making the most of this resolution that you have. It's the most efficient use of the resolution, so you're getting the sharpest text and the clearest images without possibly having to uh, go up to a higher res and all the performance and battery impacts that has as well. Did you know that our eyes are actually more sensitive to the green wavelength than pretty much any other color, which is often why uh, with night vision you have those sort of green goggles and because we can see a bit better in the dark with green light. And actually another advantage of this diamond pixel substructure on these foldable OLED screens is that it's much better at balancing that green light that it emits, which helps the screen display the correct level for our eyes. So sharper screens, a better balancing of the green light, but there's another benefit of the Fold 3, Eco Square OLEDs, which is Samsung Display's push towards efficiency and eco-friendly components, specifically using less plastic overall. And actually the efficiency part is a lot more interesting as versus their regular OLEDs, Eco Square OLEDs ditch the polarizing layer between the OLED panel itself and the UTG or ultra thin glass, which sits on top. And this polarizer actually reduces how much light the screen can emit, so removing it boosts the brightness. 
So an Eco Square OLED can be just as bright as a regular OLED while using 25% less power. And that's on top of the fact that the latest Z Fold 3 is already 29% brighter than the Z Fold 2. So you're essentially getting extra brightness at no extra cost to the battery life. And of course, the other added benefit to removing the polarizer on the Z Fold 3 is that Samsung were able to place the selfie camera under the screen. Although weirdly, in order to actually integrate the Eco Square tech, Samsung displays have had to redevelop their RGB subpixels to make them round rather than square, which you can actually easily see under the loop if you compare the fold and the flip. Now, I don't pretend to understand why, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to the overall result. So all that would be a bit pointless if the screen was brittle and it was going to break easily. But as Samsung say, they've tested this folding and unfolding mechanism 200,000 times, which I did the uh, calculations, works out to be 110 one of these every single day for five years. And of course, the Fold 3 has that water resistance and also a more durable screen even over the Z Fold 2. For me, the screen is the most impressive part of the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3. I get that the mechanism needs to be robust as well, but that's made of solid parts. But it's the screen that's a flexible sandwich of layers, including their ultra thin glass, that has to bend within this tight radius. It's genuinely impressive stuff. That's it, we're done, we did it. And congratulations, your elementary pixel substructure diploma is in the mail. But seriously, we don't usually spend this much time talking about the engineering and how all this actually works. So if you did enjoy the video and want to see more of these, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And what do you think? Are you tempted to buy one of these or maybe you already have one? Let me know what you make of the Z Flip 3 and the Fold 3 in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the tech chat. Your uh, diploma for elementary pic diploma in elementary sub pixel structures is on the mail to you. <sighs> One more time. Structure pic sub pixel structure in quantum dynamics. <sighs> elementary pixel substructures is on the it's on the mail. It's in the mail. I can't say it, P. I'm not saying it. We're moving on. That's the end.